Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Cocktail Chatter, a brand new web series designed to make happy hour a little bit happier. On this show, we break down one unique cocktail and one unique marketing strategy each show to help you take the edge off while driving your business forward. My name is Jeremy Franchese, owner of Strategic Branding Studios, and I am joined by our lead copywriter and cocktail enthusiast, Gabrielle Farms. Gabby, what are we making today? We are making a French 75 gin and champagne, guys. Sounds good to me. So I'll jump right in if that's okay. Sounds good to me. All right. So first you're going to take one ounce of gin. It could be any gin that you like or prefer. And you'll add that into a shaker and your shaker should already have ice in it. So make sure you have ice. And then you're going to take half an ounce of simple syrup. And you'll add that to the shaker as well. And this is one of my favorite cocktails simply because sometimes you don't want a mimosa. You want something a little boozier. And this is a great alternative. And then you'll add um, half an ounce of lemon juice, freshly squeezed. And you'll add that into the shaker. And we're not adding champagne just yet. And make sure you put the lid on your shaker. I've made the mistake of not doing that once. And it was a mess. Give it a good shake. Shake, shake, shake. And you'll strain that into a flute or a glass of your choice. So excited to do this. And next, you'll add three ounces of champagne and top it off. I'm going to use my little jigger here to make sure I got the measurements correct. But if you want to have fun, just pour it straight into the glass. <laughs> Just top it off. Just top it off. And voila, you're all set. And you now have a French 75. And you can add a lemon pill as a garnish, but I'm not doing that today. Just join just, the booze. We just enjoying the booze. French 75. I'd never heard of this cocktail until, until Gabby brought it up. When I looked into it a little bit, like, it's exactly how you described it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mimosa, a little ratcheted up, right? Um, <laughs> and I think it's interesting, right? So when I look at the ingredients, and I think about it. It's a really simple cocktail. Like if I was going to a bar or going to order something and somebody, like I've worked in a bar. I think a lot of people have spent some time in the hospitality industry. Like the idea of ordering uh, a champagne and gin drink, right? Off the, the beat kind of sounds interesting. It's like, well, I don't know if I'd want that. So what we're talking about today in marketing is the value of packaging right? Instead of making this drink, that's a little gin, a little champagne, a little lemon, a little simple syrup as a simple four ingredient cocktail, like naming it the French 75 gives it this distinguished value to it, right? It makes it feel like a little bit more of a cocktail than a beverage, I guess is the best transition. When we think about our content and our message, right? The French 75, like it's a World War I drink that kind of had its own unique upbringing. It's got an interesting little backstory, but the truth is if you go into the rabbit hole of Google, there's nobody that can clearly answer where the drink came from, when it was originated, what happened. It has this general undertone of sometime in World War I, there was a little bit of a mix of, of gin and, and champagne, and now here's what it is. And if it had any other name, I think it would have a little bit more of a fruity connotation, right? A little champagne, a little gin, a little lemon. Like It's very close to being what can maybe feel like a little bit of a soft cocktail, I guess we'll call it, right? I'm a Bloody Mary guy over, over mimosas if I'm going to, to a brunch or something. But you know, when I think about that cocktail, it's like the value of packaging is really, really incredible. For example, this show, if we got on here and just riffed and it wasn't cocktail chatter, we didn't have a clean introduction to the show and what we were doing here. And we were just kind of riffing. It would make no sense. It would feel really random and it wouldn't be something people would want to consume. When we think about the cocktail, giving it a name, giving it a little bit of integrity, packaging those four ingredients under the name, it builds intrigue. It builds curiosity. It gets to be people to think about what is that and what it's in it and maybe do I want it, right? It gives it some backbone. And so when we think about our marketing, whether it's video, it's written, if maybe it's a white paper, maybe it's a content series. I challenge you whether you're in the professional services space, the federal contracting space, the consult, I don't care what industry you're in, find opportunities to package your content. 
rather than just consistently putting out daily videos or posts or graphics or written content, think about the packaging of it. Is there a trend or a, a, a unique line that goes through all of that content that you can use to create a more uniform packaging around it? Maybe it's a series, maybe it's a segment, maybe it's designed for specific market. I'll give you another example. My podcast, First Little Conversations, is two years in the running, 67, 68 episodes in, right? And I started noticing that each conversation I had, I was always getting to a point with these executives, investors, entrepreneurs around how they justified making a tough decision. And in my head, I'm like, okay, so Renu Yera, right? Uh, CEO of Idea Entity, one of our clients and somebody I've really learned, earned to respect a lot in what he's built. He woke up one day realizing that the right decision was to cut out 80% of the revenue and pivot the business. So I was like, hey, how did you justify that? Instead of taking that video and just dropping it as its own little unique cut, now I started to realize if I ask that question to all my podcast interviews, I can create a new web series called the Justify It Podcast. And now that one little question with a little bit of packaging becomes a whole new thing. So when we think about it, you can throw a little gin, a little simple syrup, lemon, and, and champagne together and just have a beverage, or you can package it and have a French 75. And so as we look forward to our marketing and all our storytelling, have fun, indulge in curiosity, but find ways to package that media so that the people know what they're buying. They know that it's maybe a trend. They maybe know what to expect if it's an occurrence that's consistent. And it allows you to build a little bit more of a process that's duplicatable. Instead of having a lot of individual at-bats, it creates a series that you can play off of. And so that's the deal. One cocktail, one marketing strategy. And uh, we hope you're drinking with us at this point. This is episode four, I believe. We're going to keep rolling with this, have some fun with it. It's our, it's our time to have a little fun as well, right? Hiring Gabby to be a copywriter, but really we're just here to make some drinks, right? <laughs> um, hope you're enjoying let us know some feedback, right? Like we can co-author a nice process, whether it's in the comments, messaging us directly. We want to have an opportunity to have a productive time while taking the edge off. So if you want to talk about a cocktail, you have an idea or an approach, let us know. But y'all know the deal. This is Cocktail Chatter, episode four, joined by Gabrielle Farms, our lead copywriter and cocktail enthusiast. My name is Jeremy Franchese. We will see you soon next week for episode five. You guys behave. We'll be back soon.